Welcome to the East Asia by Rhodes Murphy chapter summary podcast at the historian's eye. Please subscribe, and if you'd like to be notified when new episodes appear, click the bell icon. Chapter 11, The Beginnings in Japan, Patterns and Origins. Section 1, Patterns and Origins. Geography and the Environment. Japan is smaller than France or California, but larger than the British Isles. It is separated from Korea by about 120 miles of sea, and Japan has generally been able to determine the nature and extent of contact with other countries. The mountainous terrain of Japan has kept the population relatively low and hampered political unity for centuries. Cultural Overview A form of feudalism arose and persisted in Japan until the 19th century, accustoming the people to somewhat authoritarian rule. Japan is insular, yet also has a tradition of borrowing from other cultures and the idea of improvement. Agriculture is limited by the landscape, although lands have been improved over the millennia. Seafood is critical to the Japanese diet. More recently, heavy fertilization has tremendously increased yields of rice. The earliest Japanese arriving about 200 to 300 BCE can be traced to Northeast Asia or Siberia. Speaking an Altaic language, related to Korean, not Chinese. They joined other peoples that had come from Malay lands and possibly from the South Pacific. Early Jomon and Yayoi. Of several Neolithic cultures that arose, the best known is the Jamon, from about 8000 BCE to about 300 BCE. The Jamon people farmed from about 300 BCE, made cord-marked pottery, and hunted, gathered, and fished. They attained the level of the Banpo culture in China, perhaps a little earlier. The Jomon culture was slowly displaced by other Neolithic groups, including the Yayoi. The Yayoi culture, from 300 BCE to 500 CE. Peoples of the Jomon culture used the potter's will, cultivated rice, irrigated fields, and began using bronze and iron. Some Chinese finds indicate contact between the two areas. Like the Longshan Chinese, Yayoi bronze creations were not for practical use. Ties with Korea and Tomb Builders Both used above-ground tombs with earthen mounds, similar iron swords, and armor. Korean culture was more sophisticated, for instance achieving writing much earlier. The arrival of rice cultivation led to a population increase. Large tombs were built from about the 3rd century CE. Bronze bells show clear Korean influence. The tomb or Kofun period from the 200s to the 500s CE. This is a later stage of the Yayoi culture. Tombs of this period are surrounded by clay Haniwa figures. Originating between Kyoto and Osaka, the tomb culture was north of Tokyo and on the island of Kyushu. Dwellings of wood and thatch raised from the ground replace the pits of Jomon culture. The earliest account of Japan, the account of the Three Kingdoms, from about 290 CE, depicts Japan as an offshoot of Korea. This account indicates a matriarchal society, and the Hanawa figures may represent female shamans. Divination and ritual were said to be important in Japan. An unmarried queen, perhaps the high priestess, is said to have ruled the country. Mythical Histories The Kojiki and the Nihon Shoki These accounts date to 712 and 720 CE. They blend myth and historical events. The account begins with the creation of the brother and sister Izanagi and Izanami, who create the Japanese islands, and the sun god Amaterasu. Amaterasu's son, Ningi, brought regalia, closely resembling those of early Shila tombs, and his grandson founded the state on the Yamato Plain. This putative founder, 
or first emperor has the title of Jimyu, or divine warrior. The Yamato state emerged by the 5th century, extending its power over Kyushu and northern Honshu to near Tokyo. A foothold in southern Korea was also established. In expanding their territory, the Japanese displaced the Anu people, earlier inhabitants that were seemingly Caucasian. Intermarriage with the Anu produced a Japanese population. Small groups of Anu live on Hokkaido today. Iron tools were made in Japan by about 200 CE. Connections between Japan and Korea continued. Korean descent was often claimed among the nobility. Many skilled Koreans lived in Japan. Both countries engaged in raids and invasions of each other. The Ui By the 5th century, clans, or the Ui, began to consolidate into the Yamato state. Hereditary chiefs ruled the clans. Yamato rulers seemed to have risen to power by consolidating several Uyi groups. The Uyi were organized into ranks, the highest being the Omi, followed by the Murayi. Rulers began to declaim descent from Amaterasu. Both Iyu and Yamato rulers were religious and political leaders. The Yamato rulers shifted local shrines to the worship of Amaterasu, claiming animism with the worship of the sun goddess. All natural features had their own kami, or spirit. Emperors and some Uyi rulers were also kami. A spirit of rice was worshipped, and phallic cults existed. Shinto Shinto simply means the way of the gods. To distinguish it from Buddhism, it is not a religion and has no developed philosophy. Ritual purity is central, necessitating cleansing of pollutants. Shinto priests are diviners and mediums. Shinto shrines celebrate nature and are very simple in style. Many are in early Uyi centers and dedicated to Uyi gods. The most famous shrine is at Issei. It was probably first built in the 500s CE. It is rebuilt every 20 years. Gateways, or tori, stand before every temple, signifying the sacred ground inside. The link with China. Buddhism reached Japan from Korea by the mid-6th century, officially in 552 CE. The Kaya League in Korea had been a point of contact between Japan and Korea. Then Shila absorbed Kaya in 562. Japan lost its foothold in Korea, but Koreans continued to move to Japan until the 800s. The Soga Uyi, with its close ties to Korea, promoted Buddhism. Through Buddhism, Chinese influence became more important. The Chinese government saw attraction as the centralizing power of the Uyi system as proving weak. The Soga influence at the Yamato court was part of this process. The chief of the Soga Uyi placed his niece on the throne as empress, and her nephew was named regent, Prince Shotoku. Shotoku's 17-article constitution gave precedence to Buddhism and Confucian values. Officials replaced the hereditary Uyi system. Shotoku sent large embassies to China in 607, 608, and 614. Taika, Nara, and Heian The rise of the Fujiwara after the death of Prince Shotoku around 620. Rebels arose against the remaining Soga rulers, resenting loss of power and the promotion of Buddhism. The rebels placed Tenchi on the throne. Fujiwari Kamatari led the Fujiwari family, was close to the throne. The Fujiwara were often called regents. Taika Reforms The reforms are begun by Tenchi and Fujiwara Kamatari. The reforms included five embassies sent to China between 653 and 669. The reforms introduced many elements of Chinese rule. A new capital, Nanawa, was built on a Chinese model. A census was taken in 670, and a law code based on Chinese models was issued, and centralized rule was attempted. In 710, the capital was moved to Nara, then to Haizhou. The Taiho, or Great Treasure, law code was issued in 702.
the capitals. Nara was built as a copy of Chang'an, the Tang capital, but it was never fully occupied. Buddhist monasteries and temples dominated the city. The Emperor Kamu, who ruled from 781 to 806, moved the capital to Heian, which is now Kyoto. Like Nara, it was built on the Chinese plan. It remained the capital until 1868. The Chinese emperor took the title Tenno, or Heavenly Ruler. The emperor was largely a figurehead and had an important place as the head of the Shinto religion. As a result of Sinicization, women lost political power. Sinicization was modulated to fit Japanese traditions. Land belonged to the state. Peasants paid taxes in rice, textiles, and labor. Local hereditary rulers dominated localities. More change was apparent at the center than at the local level. The area controlled by the state extended into northern Honshu. Barter was still the most common form of exchange, though a coinage was issued in 708. A university was established, but it mostly served the aristocracy. Chinese and Buddhist art. In art too, Buddhism was a conduit for Chinese influence. Japanese craftsmen worked mainly in wood, but also achieved great skill in bronze and lacquer. The Tang style of architecture was also followed, and can still be seen in centuries-old Japanese buildings. The wooden temple and monastery complex begun under Prince Shataku near Nara still stands. The Todaji Temple at Nara, somewhat later, has also survived. It holds a bronze Buddha, one of the largest in the world, and was dedicated in 752. Buddhism and Literacy By the 9th century, Buddhism was practiced throughout Japan, and cremation replaced burial in tombs. The diet was primarily vegetarian though fish was also eaten, and birds in areas far from the sea. Shinto deities came to be seen as part of the Buddhist pantheon. Amaterasu was identified as Vairokana, the universal Buddha, for example, in the Todaiji Temple. As with Taoism in China, Shinto continued in Japan. Shingon Buddhism was also brought from China by the monk Kobo Daishi. The monastery he founded at Mount Koya survives. Kobo became a figure of popular stories. The Tendai sect, or in Chinese, the Tentai sect, was brought from China by the monk Dengyo Daishi, who founded a monastery near the top of Mount Hiei. The sect was eclectic, absorbing elements of other religions. Tendai became dominant in Japan. Buddhism and the Spread of Literacy Buddhism introduced people to Chinese characters and Chinese vocabulary. Initially, Chinese characters exclusively were used. Literature. The first Japanese stories appeared. The Nihongi was written in 720. Japanese gazetteers also followed Chinese models. Poetry and prose used Chinese characters and Japanese phonetic symbols. The Tonka form of poetry evolved, later becoming haiku. In the main high-end period, sinicization increased, but at the end of the Tang period, contacts decreased. Embassies were stopped. Informal contact continued, though. In the late high-end period, tax exemptions for the aristocracy and for monasteries and shrines created problems. The Shouen System Hereditary aristocrats monopolized wealth and power and had large estates, or Shouen. The Fujiwara and other families protected their interests at court. Unlike European manors, Shoen were made up of dispersed lands. Managers ran the farms. Women as well as men might receive the estate's income. In time, more farmland was held in Shoen, and their holders became powerful at the local and even regional level. The aristocracy and Buddhist monasteries held power. The emperor was a figurehead. The Fujiwara family controlled the court, and by the time of the Shirakawa, schism reigned, and the emperor was able to work with non-Fujiwara aristocrats. Haiyan Culture The Shoan system was perhaps more supportive of flourishing regional cultures. Court nobles in Haiyan adopted Chinese culture and affected Chinese manners to excess. Murasaki's Tale of Genji from about 1001 CE, includes a loving description of clothing and textiles. 
Lady Say Shonagon's pillow book from about the year 1000 is a commentary on court life. Unlike women in China, Japanese women had more scope at court. Murasaki Skibu, or Lady Murasaki, who lived from about 978 to 1015. Her name is unknown, but she came from the Fujiwara clan. Her journal describes her upbringing, marriage, and work. It also describes court life. The tale of Genji recounts the life of a prince and his affairs at court, including his development as he ages. Art and Gardens Hyan art was modeled on tong patterns, including a special place for calligraphy, as well as painted scrolls, and many paneled screens, or shoji. Yet Japanese art had also begun to follow its own path. Palace architecture was lighter than the Chinese model, including open pavilions and natural spaces. Although less is known about domestic architecture, it may well have included the sliding panels of later houses. Japanese gardens are based on the Chinese model and use Chinese plants, though Japanese gardens are often on a smaller scale. Kana and monastic armies. Hyan monks developed a phonetic system, kana, for writing in Japanese, especially for poetry, because the system was driven by the sound differences between Japanese and Chinese. C. Shanagan and Murasaki Shibu both wrote their epics in kana. Often, kana characters were used alongside Chinese characters for borrowed and Chinese words. Buddhism spread beyond the court and merged with Shinto. At the same time, Pure Land Buddhism came to dominate, with its element of magic. The court still favored Tendai and Shingon. Monasteries became wealthy from the revenue they drew from their lands. Many had their own armies, at first for protection, but then to rival other sects. Court life was increasingly divorced from life outside the capital. The indirect control exercised by the Fujiwara was inadequate. Both the Shoan and the Buddhist monasteries fielded armies. Bands of samurai, hereditary gentlemen warriors, became prominent. Matriarchy declined further in this era dominated by warriors. The adoption of Confucian values also added to this trend. Pressures on the environment. Population pressure increased. The population was perhaps 5 million in 1000 CE. The thin soils were easily depleted. The forests suffered greatly. Clearing of forests for paper, agriculture, and wood increased. Huge building projects contributed to this. Shipbuilding also required large amounts of wood. Limited supplies of lumber and wood pulp influenced development of rice paper screens and minimalist architecture. Some roads were now covered with tile. Tatami, which are rush or grass mats, now covered floors. Houses became smaller. Shipbuilding increased. Embassies to China and contact with Korea required more vessels. An imperial order of 882 forbade wood cutting in the areas that provided the best timber for ships. Charcoal burning also consumed large amounts of wood. The need increased with greater use of iron. Forest fires increased in frequency and destructiveness. Attempts to limit clearing were not completely successful. There were some attempts at reforestation, and some of the loss was offset by rapid regrowth.